Canada is back at the United Nations, baby. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. If you haven't heard the news, Canada is back in the good books of the UN after 10 years of darkness under the Harper government. <gasps> Look, I've never been a fan of the UN, I don't like the organization, and I used to argue with the former government of Stephen Harper that Canada should just leave the UN. But we never did. True, we didn't win our seat on the Security Council. No, we lost out to Portugal, a client state of China, and, well, a country that was more friendly to the organization of the Islamic Conference than we were. But still, Canada was one of the main donors to projects like the World UN's World Food Program. We were second only to the United Nations or the United States in resettling UN refugees year after year. So Canada never left the UN. It's true, we scaled back peacekeeping, but that started under the Liberals as we were engaged in a major conflict in Afghanistan. Canada never left the UN despite my calls to do so, but Ban Ki-moon still stuck his nose into domestic politics in joining in this welcoming Canada back chorus as he stood in the foyer of the House of Commons with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Prime Minister Trudeau has declared Canada's recommitment to the United Nations. I am here to declare that the United Nations enthusiastically welcomes this commitment. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. It was a real love fest between Trudeau and Ban Ki-moon something that I'll never quite understand, but then again, I'm not a liberal. Trudeau talked about how they were meeting that morning, they were holding a news conference, they were off to speak to students at a local high school, and then... We'll wrap up the day with a dinner to honor Mr. Ban and his many impressive accomplishments while at the UN. What accomplishments would those be? Covering up corruption, firing a whistleblower that exposed a, a child sexual assault ring within UN peacekeepers in Africa? What accomplishments would those be? There are many problems with the UN, many of them happening under Ban Ki-moon's watch. Human rights abusers running human rights panels, things like that. But Ban Ki-moon still stood in the foyer of Canada's House of Commons and said he's happy that Canada is going to take lessons on human rights from this corrupt organization that gives dictators and rogue states the same standing as a nation like Canada. I also commend the Prime Minister for committing to addressing United Nations human rights recommendations on indigenous people in Canada, particularly violence against indigenous women and girls. Canada taking human rights lessons from the United Nations. Does that make sense to you? Well, if you're a liberal, it might, because liberals don't tend to question the UN. But I do. And I'm not just making stuff up, as some of my critics online have claimed. Let me go through a list of 10 different problems with the UN. And this is from UN Watch, a group based in Geneva that monitors the UN activity, particularly on human rights. You can go to the Twitter account of Hillel Neuer if you want to follow along. He's a Canadian graduate of McGill University who's concerned that Ban Ki-moon, after he visits Ottawa, is going to Montreal to visit his alumni, Miguel. He wants the school, he wants the students at the school to ask questions. So he tweeted out a list of problems with the UN. Let me read through the list. Why did the UN recently elect Saudi Arabia to be head a Human Rights Council panel? That's right. Saudi Arabia is not only on the Human Rights Council and tried to be the leader of that council last year. They failed at that, but they're, they're now heading up a panel that appoints the top human rights bodies or the top uh, appoints people to the top human rights bodies around the United Nations. Saudi Arabia, a country that recently sentenced a blogger to a thousand lashes, a country that is under protest all the time for the way it treats women, the way it treats minorities, the way it treats anybody that fall, runs afoul of their laws. His next question that he thinks students at McGill should be asking, why, on February 25th, will UN re-elect Syria to leadership post on decolonization committee? That's right. Syria, currently in the middle of a civil war, is going to lead a decolonization committee. Why is Syria even being given the, the leadership of any committee? Why are they still held up? The world is trying to get rid of Bashar al-Assad as a leader. He is a man who stands accused, whether you like him or not, he stands accused of using chemical weapons on his own people. 
doesn't matter if the other side did it as well. This guy shouldn't be leading up any committee, but he's already the leader. He's going to be reelected. Third question. After Paris terror, terror attacks, why did you, an expert, blame the West? Well, we know the answer for that. To the internationalists of the world, the West is always to blame. But this actually happened. A 1,500-word essay explaining why the Paris terrorist attacks were the fault of France and the West. Question four. Why was Algerian rep who tried to muzzle UN rights experts given or elected a UN rights expert? Algeria as a UN human rights expert? That's puzzling to me. Five, if UN Charter promises equality, why does UN General Assembly condemn Israel 20 times and rest of the world three times? The United Nations under Ban Ki-moon has remained a place that singles out Israel for critique more than any country in the world. In fact, more than the rest of the world combined. That's a problem. That's what Canada is being welcomed back to. I don't want a part of that. Question six, if UN cares about genocide, why did UNESCO elect genocidal Sudan to leadership post? You remember for years the world worried about the genocide in Darfur, in Sudan? Now they're had, getting a, a key post at UNESCO? If UN teaches ethics, why was ex-UN General Assembly president arrested for $1.3 million bribery? That's right, the head of the UN General Assembly, under Ban Ki-moon. $1.3 million bribery scandal facing charges. Doesn't this sound like oil for food? Doesn't this sound like the same old UN over and over again? Question eight, if UN opposes human rights abuse, why did UNHRC elect Venezuela regime as a member? Venezuela, the country that crushes dissent, political dissent, the country that just recently tried to have it, its government kept in power by overturning the election, by stacking the court and then forcing the court to overturn the election results? Yeah, they're on the Human Rights Council. Question nine, given warnings of genocide in Burundi, why did UN Human Rights Council elect the regime as a member? Well, because everyone's welcome at the UN. Rogue nations, dictators, Robert Mugabe given prime spot. He's just as good as any democratic leader. And question 10, if UN supports women's rights, why did UN Women Exec Board elect misogynistic Iran? All good questions, none of them answered, none of them asked actually while ba Ban Ki-moon was there. Perhaps you'll get them in Montreal, but not if it's a liberal loving audience, because as I said, liberals tend not to criticize. They tend not to question the United Nations. Now, my critics could easily say that I'm too harsh on the organization. Perhaps I am, but maybe that's because no one else is. Maybe that's because people are just willing to put on their rose-colored glasses and look past the problems and celebrate multilateralism at all costs. All costs including UN peacekeepers raping children in the Central African Republic, the whistleblower that well, alerted the world to this, getting fired from his post at the UN for disclosing a document. No, he blew the whistle on it, but he's the one that's being well, held to account by the UN. There are so many problems with that organization. I don't think it's a good thing that Canada celebrates being back in its good books, not until the UN actually cleans up its act.